Hello everyone, welcome to Purposely Design. I bless you, I pray all is well with you on today. Um, today I wanted to focus in on trusting the timing of the Lord. Trusting the timing of the Lord. Um, you got so many people that basically want to give advice and try to persuade you that you need to be here at a certain time, at a certain date. And yes, it is according to a certain time and a certain date, whatever the will of the Father is for your life. But you can't go so much off of people and their timing. But it's all about the timing of the Lord. And so I want to get into that on today. But first, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for today. Thank you for your word that's being fulfilled in the earth even now, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for your mercy, your grace, your love towards us. And Father God, we just pray right now that you will continue to lead us and to guide us and to direct us, not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, open up our eyes to see and our ears to hear and our hearts to be receptive to your will and to your way, even our minds, Lord God. Hallelujah. In the mighty, even in the subconscious, in the conscious mind, Lord God, we need you to take complete and uh, utter control over our minds, over our lives. Lord God, we surrender all unto you, Lord God, because we know that you know what to do. You know what you're doing, Lord God. So help us to surrender fully unto you, not not by, by our own emotions and our own feelings and allowing those things to dictate and get in the way. But Father, help us to just trust and rely on you learning to walk by faith. And not by sight in this hour in the mighty name of Jesus, God, give us power, love, and a sound mind on today in the mighty name of Jesus. And God will forever give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it all belongs to you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank God and amen. So y'all, let's get into this word on today. I want to start off. You know, by saying that, um, I, I just kind of really want to ask a question. And the question is, whose timing would you rather trust? You know, you can trust the timing you wrote down. You know, not to say that goals aren't important or necessary because they're very necessary. It is important to set goals. And it's not that it's impossible either. But when your goals don't align or, or even possibly go ahead of God's plan for your life, you have to learn whose plans are more important, his or yours. You know, your family may have your best interest at hand but if their intentions don't align with God's time or his intentions for your life it won't succeed it won't be successful you know you have to ask yourselves who will are you trying to fulfill I know I did a podcast on this whose will are you trying to fulfill yours or the Lord's? You know, we have we put things in our mind and we just think of things and we believe that we should be here. We should have this by this time. But if it doesn't align with the timing of God, you know, if it's not according to his will or his plan for our lives, not to say that he can't give you what you want or you desire. But the Bible tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these other things shall be added unto you as we seek the Lord's will, his timing. Look, 
It's not all about you. It's not all about what you think or what you believe or what you want. But it's all about God and it's all about his time and what he what he wants to do in this hour. And all we have to learn to do is surrender to his timing. You know, that's something that we tend to fight against because we want certain things so bad. The world tells us and, and, you know, our family tells us and, you know, a lot of things were programmed in our minds and we think that we got to be here in order to be successful. We have to have this in order to be successful. We have to have a certain bank account, a number in order to be successful. But our true success is not in, in anything that's materialistic because we're not even supposed to be storing up here on earth, but more so in the, hev- in the heavenlies. You know, if it doesn't honor God, then it's, what is it worth? You know, the Bible states it like this. What profit is a man to gain the whole world and to lose his own soul? So you can gather all these things but if you lose your soul on account of it, how profitable is that to you? It's not very profitable. And so we have to learn how to store up. And half the way that we do that is fulfilling the will of the Lord for our lives. Not, I mean, when you live a surrendered life, everything else goes. Like whatever you thought, whatever you imagined, whatever you desired, you know, it's no longer about you, but it's all about the Father and His goals, what He wants, what He desires. You know, Abraham, he often told God, you know, that he didn't have an heir. You know what I'm saying? Um, he wanted a child. And so he kept going back and, and forth on, you know, to God about that. But Abraham was obedient. He had faith. He trusted God. And because of that, God accredited to him as if and though it was righteousness. So, you know, we have to recognize that, you know, we that we need to have more faith in those areas where we lack, but we don't see, you know, faith it has nothing to do with the things that you see in a carnal aspect, but it has everything in what you believe according to your faith being unto you. You know, you will receive the thing that you believe, you know. Um, sometimes, you know, we get ahead of ourselves and we decide we want a certain thing and then we go and do it our own way, just kind of like Abraham and Sarah, Sarah. At the time, her name has yet had yet not changed, and neither had Abraham. His name was Abram, and his wife's name was Sarai, right? And they couldn't; they bared no children because their name had yet to change. They didn't know that that once the their name changed, the game changed. the The game changed when their name changed, right? Now he's he he already was t- foretold he was going to be the father of many nations, you know, and um, several nations was going to come out of Sarah's womb. And at the time, like I said, she was Sarai. Not only that, but if we go and and just think on how she got ahead of herself. And she she decided to make God's will be fulfilled through her handmaiden. And that didn't go well at all. First of all, the promise wasn't with her. It wasn't with her handmaiden. It was with it was with Sarah. And so, you know, with her being in the household, it, it caused friction, it caused confusion. And sometimes we make decisions that will interfere with God's plan. If he didn't tell you to do it, why are you doing it? Because a lot of times we get puffed up and filled up with our own lusts. And we get carried away and we run with it. But what did God say? 
you know, we have to take that into consideration. Did he tell you this? Did he approve that? What did he say about it? And oftentimes we don't even think on that level. We don't ask these questions. We don't ask God, Lord, what do you say about this thing? What do you say I should do concerning this? You know, how are you going to work this thing out? You know what? The best thing you could do is not try to. There was a song back in the day. It said, why are you trying to figure out? God, I already done worked it out. Like you, you trying to, you stepping on God's territory. You trying to be the God over your own life instead of allowing him to be God over you and reign over you. You know, um, so once again, you have to ask yourself, whose will are you trying to fulfill? Yours or the Lord's? The Bible speaks on the life we're living right now. No matter what people tell you, your life is not your own. You have been bought with a price. First Corinthians 6 and 15 says, know ye not. That your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. And the Bible says, flee fornication, sin, and I mean, every sin that a man does is without the body. But he that committed fornication sins against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. And a lot of us aren't taught this, you know, we, we're not taught that we're not our own. A lot of times we, we, we are taught that we make our own decisions, but especially when we turn a certain age, we believe we're in control of our own lives and our own destiny. And we don't even consider God. And what did he say about it? What is his will? for our lives we don't do that oftentimes we just take into our own consideration what we want for our own selves and what we trying to do we don't see the bigger picture our eyes is still closed and so are our ears 20 said for ye are bought with a price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So there it is. You're not your own. You're supposed to glorify God, not only in your body, but in your spirit. Because your body and your spirit belongs to God. Romans 6 and 4. It says, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we shall we also should walk in the in newness of life. So we have a new life. We have to we ought to be walking in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of His death, so when we you know are baptized. We are planted together in the likeness of his death. We die with Christ. And then the Bible says we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So we will rise with Christ. Not only did we die with him, but we also on the third day, just like as he did, just as he is, so are we, right? It says, for he that is dead is free from sin. Oh, goodness. I think I skipped over six. Let's see. I'm sorry. Let's go back. Six says, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. So who we used to be is now crucified with Christ. 
that the body of sin might be destroyed. So that body that we used to have is no longer, we, we no longer uh, obtain that body. But the Bible says that it's crucified with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed. So that body that we used to have is now destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. We're no longer servants of sin. He set us free from sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. So because we're dead in Christ Jesus. 8 tells us. Now if we be dead with Christ. We believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead. Dieth no more. Death have no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. So just as he liveth unto God, so should we. 11 says, likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed into sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. God is in control. You've been bought with a price and you live through Jesus Christ. You've been bought with a price and now we must learn to live through Christ Jesus. Acts 17 and 28 says, For in him we live and move and have our being as certain also of your poet your own poets have said for we are also his offspring remember ecclesiastics 3 and 1 and it says to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose purpose under the heaven a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted a time to kill and a time to heal a time to to break down and a, and a time to build up a time to weep and a time to laugh a time to mourn and a time to dance a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from brace, from embracing, a time to get, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war. In a time of peace. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he hath set the world in their heart. So that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. That's such a beautiful word. There is a time for everything. God's timing is perfect. Listen, Psalms 138 and 8 says, The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. He will make perfect everything concerning you. According to his timing. Not yours. Not everybody else's. But according to his timing. Therefore it's not about your time. Not about what your mama said. Not about what your friends say. God has the final say. Proverbs 16 and 1 says. The preparations of the heart in man. And the answer of the tongue. Is from the Lord. All the ways of man of a man are clean in his own eyes. 
but the Lord waiteth the spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Now, let's read this in the contemporary English version of that same scripture. The Lord has the final word. Listen. If this ain't plain, I don't know what is. So we're going back. The same scripture that we just read. Proverbs 16 and 1. It says, We humans make plans. <laughs> this is just so plain and blunt. Flat out. We humans make plans. But the Lord has the final word. We may think we know what's right. What is right. But the Lord is the judge of our motives. So he knows why we're doing things. He's the judge of our motives. Share your plans with the Lord and you will succeed. If we go to God about what we want, that's the only way we could become successful if, is if we make him a part of our plans. We need to talk, consult with him. That's, that may not be what he wants for you. Um, four says the Lord has a reason for everything he does. We don't understand it. We don't know why he does the thing he does and how, but the Bible says here, the Lord has a reason for everything he does and he lets evil people live only to be punished. Woo. Verse two stated that we may think we know what is right. But the Lord is the judge of our motives. Now that verse reminded me of Proverbs 14 and 12. It says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Now I, I state this often because a lot of us, we go by our common sense, what we believe is should, you know is true or should be or whatever. We got our own thoughts and what we believe. And a lot of times we think a certain way and that thing leads to death. We find ourselves in a very bad place going off our own motives and our own thoughts and belief systems. Proverbs 9, I mean 16 and 9 says, A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. The contemporary English version of verse 9 says, we, we make our own plans, but the Lord decides where we will go. We make our own plans, but the Lord decides where we will go. So we got our own thoughts. We believe our own ways, but God is the one who makes the decision. He decides. Where are we going to go? Wherefore, remember who's in charge, who's in control. And remember Isaiah 55 and 8. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Now, you know, primarily I read the King James Version. Whatever, you know, version you read, you know, that's between you and God. But this is the version that I primarily read. But every so often I'll give reverence to um, other versions just because of um, I like the wording and it kind of breaks it down in another way. And I, I like to see multiple perspectives of the same version. I mean, of the same uh, verse that we read sometimes. So. But some some of this to me is just like flat out like you don't have to think this out is is plain you know for my thoughts are not your your thoughts neither are your ways my ways said the Lord now it's plain for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than yours than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. His ways and thoughts are higher than ours. Wherefore, we must go, we must get on his level, right? 
come up higher, like the Bible says, come up hither, okay? So we can stay in his will. Remember, Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. He knows. He knows what his thoughts are towards you. He, there's another version that says, I know the plans that I have for you. You know, um, 12 says, then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. Look, when you can line up and get in the will of God, you can call upon him and go and pray unto him and he will listen. He said, I hearken unto you. He will not only listen, but he'll speak back. He'll tell you how he feel about the situation. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. When you searching for God with all your hearts, whatever you were thinking, whatever you planned, whatever you wanted, However you wanted things to go should be blank because it ain't about you right then. You searching God out about the situation and you supposed to be allowing him to be in control of it. So you come to him fully with your whole heart, asking him to lead you and guide you and direct you in the way that he would have for you to go, not based on the way that you want things to go. He says, and ye shall seek me and find me. So while you looking, you're going to find him when, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. I need you to put everything into this. When you fully go after God with everything you got. And you say to the Lord, not my will, but thy will be done in my life. So you don't have any, your intentions aren't about you, but it's all about him. You surrendering fully unto God. Now you give them full access and control of your life. You're not going by your own wants and your own desires, but you're going off of the desires of the Lord. Ephesians 1 and 8 says, Wherein he hath abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself. He purposed his own will, his own um, good pleasure. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. So he already predestinated us according to the purpose of him, of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. God don't need our counseling. He don't need you to tell him what he need to do. There's people that do try. Lord, you need to go over there and do this. Lord, you saw how this and that and that. He got his own way of dealing with things. 
And what we supposed to be doing is trusting in him and trusting in his will, whatever his will is. That his will will be fulfilled on the earth. God, he don't need our counseling. He is the ruler and dictator. The king of kings and the Lord of lords. He doesn't need your two cents. All he needs is your obedience. He needs you to surrender everything and give it over. 1 Samuel 15 and 22 says, And Samuel said, Have the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. He rather you listen to what he has to say. He rather. You be obedient. Jesus then already made the ultimate sacrifice. All we have to do is believe, trust, and obey. And love. That's the keys right there. He'll give us the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding, everything else that we need. Once we learn how to, you know, be, get in him. Because in him, we move breathe and have our very being listen matthews 12 and 50 says for whosoever shall do the will of my father which is in heaven the same is my brother and sister and mother look you become kingdom when you learn how to be obedient when you learn to do the will of the father versus your own will that helps you to cross over to a whole nother level. Now you are considered not just friends, but heirs and joint heirs with Christ. Don't believe me? Okay. Let's go. To Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We're going to start with 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to... to the flesh to live after the flesh for if ye live after the flesh ye shall die but if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body through the spirit mortify the deeds of the body ye shall live for as many as are led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God so this tells me you cannot be led by your flesh anyway you have to be led by the Spirit of God. And therefore, if you're led by the Spirit, then you are a son. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children... If we are children of God, then we are heirs of God. It says, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Now let's go back. To 
to Matthew 7 and 21. It says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Let's remember Matthew 10 and 37 through 39 says, He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. So, you can't love, and I want to say even listen to anybody. Like we should more than him. Period. I don't care if it's your child. I don't care if it's your father, your mother, your daughter. And if you don't take off your take up your cross and follow him. The Bible says you're not worthy. If you're not doing the will of the Father for your life. If you're not doing what he called you to do. The Bible says you're not worthy. And if you find your life, the Bible says you'll lose it. And if you lose your life, like we talked about dying, really to self, He said, for my sake shall find it. Now you find an everlasting life. And let's remember Philippians 1 and 6. It says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Remember, Not to put your trust in yourself, not to put your trust and faith in everything else or everyone else, but to put your faith and your trust in God, knowing that he the one that began the good work in you, and he's going to be the one to finish it. If you could trust him to begin, then you should be able to trust him to finish He started it. He'll finish it. But all we have to do is trust and believe in him. Believe his timing. Not our will, but God, your will be done in our lives. So, Father, uh, you know, so everyone, let's pray. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, we just thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for your word on today. We thank you, Lord God, how you are helping us not to trust in our own word, our own work our own wants, our own desires. But we ask, Father, that you will allow whatever your will is for our lives to be done in our lives. That we don't trust in our own self more than we trust in you. That we don't go by our own ways and our own abilities and the things that we desire. And that you will be at the forefront of every decision that we make. Not our will, God, but your will be fulfilled. Your will be done in our lives, God. For your thoughts aren't our thoughts and your ways aren't our ways. Help us to surrender to your ways. Bring us up higher so that we can understand your ways and that your will will be fulfilled in our lives and, and not only in our lives, but in those lives that we touch from day to day, Lord God, on a daily basis. Lord God, let us be that light that shines 
before men and compels them to live a life that is in your will. Not based on our emotions and our feelings, Father, but based on your word and based on what you say to us, Lord God. Help us to be obedient to not only the letter, but also to your word. Not only by bread, because the Bible, your word says, um, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So, Father, help us to be obedient to what you say, as well and to take that into consideration what you said to us because that's a relationship that's how it's more personal and just to know that your timing is always right what you say is always right you won't leave us you won't forsake us you won't lead us astray and if all we gotta do is to stay on course with you your will and walk how you call us to walk and do the things that you have called us to do then I believe everything else will fall in place your Bible your word says to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you everything else all these things shall be added unto you everything else that we desire everything else because we'll get to a place where your desires are our desires and Lord help us to get to that place that we no longer selfish but and not leaning to our own understanding but acknowledging you in all our ways so that you can direct our paths Help us, O oh God. Not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, that your will be fulfilled on the earth, in the earth, and for your glory. Not about us, but I hope about you in Jesus' mighty name. And we give you praise, and we give you honor, and we give you glory for everything that you're doing and everything that you've already done. In Jesus' mighty name, when we thank you, thank you, Lord God, for all that you've already done. Thank you for provision. Thank you, Lord God, for understanding. Thank you for your love and your kindness. Thank you, Lord God, for your long suffering with us at times when we've gotten into our own way. That you still continue to, to deal with us and to lead us back on your path and not allow us to go off so far off the path that we find ourselves dead because of something we choose to do, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for everything that you've already done for us, that we're still here and we still have a chance to do your will, your way. So help us on, on an everyday basis. That your will will be fulfilled in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. And God, we forever give you praise, honor, and glory for it. Thank God and amen. Until next time, God bless.